Hey guys, it's Josh with Battle Bond here. So I'm coming at you guys today with what is going to be a series of videos doing a tournament recap for a tournament that happened here in Calgary for the weekend of April 6th and 7th. So uh, yeah, I'm going to do this video as like an intro to the tournament as a whole and kind of go over my list and stuff. And then um, we'll go through each of the games one by one and get those up so you guys can kind of see how I fared and kind of what the tournament was like here. To start things off, I'll just go over my list. The event was hosted uh, at Sentry Box, just a, a local gaming store here in Calgary. And uh, Rhett who you guys may have seen as one of my opponents in another battle report was the person who ran and TO'd this event. Big shout out to him and Sentry Box for hosting. Really nice place, really good venue, everything ran smoothly. Uh, as far as I know there wasn't any hiccups with regards to like anything going on on the player side or anything like that. Uh, so we got through we had three games on the Saturday and two games on the Sunday four or five games total. And that's about it for that. Let's go through my list. I took Mordor to this event. If you guys check out some of the other videos that we've posted in the last little bit, I really wanted to get a great beast on the table and paint it up. So I managed to get that done and I wanted to uh, list that feature that. So now the the only problem is I honestly didn't put that much thought into my list. I, w I was busy with getting painting done and a bunch of other stuff. So <laughs> when it came time to submit lists, I pretty much spent 20 minutes and came up with an idea and just said, okay, that's what I'm going to run. So I didn't really take the time to kind of refine it or anything like that. And uh, yeah, that'll be reflected in kind of how the games went and <laughs> where I ended up placing total for the, uh, the tournament here. Just going over my Mordor list, I have the Witch King, obviously. Gave him a horse and the crown, of course. And we gave him three might, 17 will, three fate. So, I mean, that's pretty standard Witch King stuff, right? He's obviously going to be a pretty big linchpin. In his warband, we have five Black Numenorians for mostly the fight four and the D6. So, yeah, so you guys will see when we finish up the list here that it's kind of on the elite side as far as like models and stuff goes, which was kind of part of the issue with this list as we go through. Um, the games and stuff. Back on track with the list, so we have the Black Numenorans. We had a Moranin Orc with Banner, Spear, and Shield, and then six other Moranins with Spears to uh, back up the the Black Numenorians. And then the next Warband is the Great Beast, because like I said, I wanted to bring him and try him out. And then finally, my idea was that... Oh, sorry, he should have a horse. I wanted the Great Beast to take kind of as little chip damage as possible because he's only, you know, D7, right? So, I mean, especially like elf bows, they can potentially take some wounds off of him that I don't want him to take and could cause a stampede into my own lines, which again is something I was trying to avoid. So I went with the Shadow Lord to be able to um, basically make it so that my opponent needs sixes to hit everything within six inches of him, including the Great Beast. In hindsight, I think that it actually would have just been better to take a budget Ring Wraith and spam a bunch of bodies to compensate for the fact that the like my defense would have been pretty low but uh, again don't really know until you try right so um this was something that i was trying out so in the the shadow lords warband here we have uh six moran and orcs with nothing 
And then finally we have uh, five orcs with spears to back up the Moran and orcs. So the idea was to always have strength four in all of my combats one way or the other if it was whether it was Moranans on the front line or Moranans um, backing up black Numenorians with spears and then yeah the orc warriors are there to do what orc warriors do and die and the great beast actually has the nine bows in it so uh, I had a decent amount of shooting and to be honest the shooting did way more throughout this tournament than orc shooting has ever done for me so that was a pretty pleasant surprise so if we kind of switch screens here uh we can have a, a look at my army and just see what it looks like all painted and on the battlefield here so yeah, unfortunately this is the only kind of picture that I got of it because we were pretty pressed for time. Like it was pretty much as soon as a game ended, um, at least on, on my table, as soon as our, our game ended, we had maybe like five minutes or so and then we were on to the next game. It's pretty pretty quick turnaround. So I managed to snap this shot of them so you guys can see the, the different war bands. So we've got the Witch Kings here, the Great Beast, who I didn't actually model with the orcs in it because I'm lazy and I didn't <laughs> want to paint up the extra nine orcs and the commander on him. So they're just sitting behind him over here. And then the Shadow Lords Warband right here. Yeah, so that is pretty much it for as far as that goes. Oh, the, the tournament ended up having... 16 players the cap was i believe 24 but because it was a, a two-day event like normally we get people coming down from edmonton and sometimes uh elsewhere too if it's not too long of a drive but yeah because it, it was a two-day event there was only a, a couple of guys from edmonton i think and otherwise it was pretty local. So uh, a few of these names will sound familiar if you've seen any of our other battle reports, um, because obviously it's just mostly people from the, the local meta, meta here. So yeah, that's pretty much it for that. So we will wrap this up and go through, uh, starting with game number one that I had.